Hey there, welcome back to another review, this time of the 1999 film House on Haunted Hill, which for some reason this is not out on Blu-ray in the US, so thanks to Till from Germany who sent this to me, you need, once again you do need a region free Blu-ray player to play this, I don't know why this film's not on Blu-ray in the US. I did have the film on DVD, which I will admit the DVD, I think I like that cover better than just this hand. I mean, was it? It's not fucking Adam's family. I don't know why there's a hand on the cover. But the picture quality looks great. It has the same features that are on the DVD, but again, really good picture quality. Nice to see this film in HD. And it makes sense why it looks good on HD, because it's not. Compared to others, it's not that old of a film. It's 1999. And there are fucking films from before that, like the fucking Garbage Pail Kids movie, that has a Blu-ray before this movie in the U.S. That makes no sense. But it's Warner Brothers, so they're shitty at that. But yeah. House on Haunted Hill. If you're wondering... Just what it looks like. But yeah. I enjoyed this ever since I saw it back on VHS in 1999. And I think it's a damn good movie. It's, I think, one of the better remakes. It's especially a lot better than the other 1999 remake, The Haunting. Jan de Bont's film with Liam Neeson and Catherine Zeta-Jones. That movie is awful. It's terrible. It's a PG-13 film where it wasn't scary at all. The house was too pretty. The CGI was too abundant. The It just did not work at all, that movie. Maybe one day I'll do a review of that. But this one, I think William Malone did a good job directing. He directed a film from the 80s I enjoyed called Creature. Uh, the cast I enjoy. You have Jeffrey Rush, Fumka Jansen from Deep Rising, and she's known as Jean Grey in a lot of the X-Men movies. You also have Tate Diggs, Allie Larder, who would be in some of the Final Destination films, Brigitte Wilson from Mortal Kombat, Chris Catan, who is actually fairly decent in the film. Peter Gallagher, very fast-paced movie. Don't, it's not too long of a film, hour and thirty-some minutes, give or take. The actually, now that I think about it. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, for those wondering, there's no different features. What's on the DVD is on the Blu-ray. So if you are interested in getting this, I think you need to read your free Blu-ray player and you just get in the HD version, which I appreciate. Because between this and The Haunting, I always thought this was done the right way. They had a good location, takes place in this house that used to be an insane asylum back in the day. Even having an appearance by Jeffrey Combs, that doesn't hurt. The look of the house, I thought it was very well done. It fit the mood of a horror film. The the house, the structure inside, brought a nice atmosphere to it. Some of the soundtrack, I mean, you, got, you have a nice rendition of Sweet Dreams by Marilyn Manson. Both, It's played once during the film and then at the end credits. Jeffrey Rush and Fountain Jansen are married together and they have this nice fun biting dialogue where they absolutely hate each other so the way they snap at each other via dialogue is a lot of fun and brings a good bit of humor into it but at the same time it is R rated you do get some nice aftermath of gore I mean at one time Jeffrey Rush is looking at someone and he swivels the chair around and literally their entire face is gone. Imagine taking an ice cream scoop and just doing like this. Like all this is gone. And of course, you have some nice after effects because can be. Chris Nicotero and Berger worked on 
further worked on this film. I thought I had some, I don't know if I call them set pieces, but sequences I remember. Brigitte Wilson, when she's looking through and she has a video camera, there's nothing there. And then when she looks up, there's a bunch of doctors, including Jeffrey Combs, and then they attack her. And then when they find her, they don't find her body, they just find a blood trail that goes from the ground to the wall and into the house. Uh, Chris Catan, he's a lot of fun. He's the guy who owns the place and just wants to get out of there right away. And then when he's trapped in there with this group, he's pretty much knows we're fucked and I just want to get something to drink. And man, I love to get laid before I die. And the, the gist of the plot, for those who never saw it, very loosely based on Vincent Price's House in Haunted Hill. I mean, even... Jeffrey Rush's character is named Price, and he kind of looks like Vincent Price, even though, for what I understand, he was going more for a look of the director John Waters, but it just came off more as looking a bit like Vincent Price. But Jeffrey Rush's character, he likes to make these amusement parts where they really want to scare you and have fun and have a lot of surprises. Uh, for example, it's an early fun sequence where he has this news reporter and the cameraman, for those who's a fan of the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the guy who played Spike, uh, James Marsters, I believe his name, he's the cameraman. And both her and the cameraman, the Spike from the Buffy show, or with Jeffrey Rush, and they're going up to this, this uh, roller coaster. And as it goes up, it seems like it malfunctions, they're just going all the way down, and you find out that's part of the ride because it's just a TV screen on the bottom, and TV screens around to simulate the elevator going down. And then even part of the ride, when they get on the roller coaster, it'll purposely break open so that this fake roller coaster with dummies will fly off, scare people, and then it'll fix itself. So I'm getting at this is a guy that likes to play very elaborate tricks, Jeffrey Rush's character. And Fountain Johnson, you know, they both hate each other to death. But for a party, they decide to invite some people. Some people arrive. They include Peter Gallagher, Tay Diggs, Allie Lauder, Brigitte Wilson. Allie Lauder's character, you find out was the secretary to the person who was supposed to be there. But she snuck in because she heard there's going to be a lot of money involved. Tay Diggs was a former pro baseball player. Peter Gallagher, you find there's some hidden motives with his character. Bridget Wilson used to kind of have a talk show, kind of, sort of. And they're supposed to survive the night, and if they survive the night, they get paid $1 million a piece. And even from the get-go, I had a feeling this would be a good film when I saw this back on VHS, because even the way it opened, with these creepy credits and like the string sort of stop motion animation type of string going around and spooky music, you have these dolls and just the way the, the credits, the credits in this film alone is creepier than the entire remake of The Haunting by Jan de Bon. People say, oh that's, no, I'm being serious. Those credits are creepier than anything in the 1999 The Haunting, which is why that feels a piece of shit. That's more of a kid's film. People say Poltergeist is a kid's film. No, The Haunting is a kid's film. Only kids would be bored out of mind too. Just like I was. But this felt like a movie for adults. <laughs> and this was the first release by the company Dark Castle Entertainment. So you have producers Robert Zemeckis, Joel Fatfuck Silver, and Gilbert Adler. And I think that company would later release the remake of 13 Ghosts, which I remember not minding, actually. Tony Shalhoub. I remember that being a pretty decent. Gothica, which I barely remember. Ghost Ship, which I hated. I ranted that on that on this channel. I hate Ghost Ship. I'm like, I've seen that done better. It's called Death Ship. With Richard Crenna. I think they went on to do... Didn't they do... Produce Stallone's Bullet to the Head and shit like that? I, I can't even remember... I'm sure I could look it up. I don't want to. 
But this was their first release, and I think this did fairly decent. Even though the 1999 Haunting didn't make that much money, it's still... If you look at just the box office gross, it was a higher number than this one, but I, this just didn't cost as much as that one. But I think that was released in the summer. This was released around, I want to say October. Could be wrong on that. For some reason, I remember this being released around the Halloween season. Which made sense as this is a fun movie to watch on Halloween. I thought the cast worked well together. I like that the opening of the film, you have this insane asylum and Jeffrey Combs is this doctor trying to a patient. You have some nice pieces of gore. I mean, one of the doctors get a tap by a patient grabbing like three pencils, shoving it right into the neck and popping out of the neck, very bloody. And I'm like, wow, well, okay, this is a nice way to start it. You got Jeffrey Combs, you got cool gore, like three pencils through the neck. And that's after a creepy credit sequence. And this is background, what happened in the 30s. Go back to the day. Again, I think Jeffrey Rush does a great job. I was actually, I'd actually say this is one of his better characters that he played. Definitely one of the characters I liked from him. He was just a lot of fun. And just the whole thing with the elevator and then going haywire and it's fake and then the roller coaster, all that stuff that happens there. They say you get to the party. The look inside the house, the setting, the production design, I think is very well done. At times throughout, when they're looking through this house, again, it used to be an insane asylum, there are moments that I remember reading in a Fangoria article that one of the influences the director had was Jacob's Ladder. And I'm looking at the poster there, but if I turn the camera, it probably camera would fuck up. But I do see that. I do see that a lot. At least there are times where you actually have someone spinning their head very quickly, like Jacob's Ladder. I think he did that purposely as a nod to that film. Which, hey, more films should take nods from Jacob's Ladder. Silent Hill, the movie, should have taken nods from the Jacob's Ladder movie. To certain the people who made the game said they based it on Jacob's Ladder. Well, that's one of the bases for it. Tate Diggs, I know some people knocked his acting. No, he would not. He was not going to win any Oscars for his role. But I thought he fit fine. He was, I, I liked him. Rough around the edges, but I, I liked Tate Diggs. I didn't mind him in the role. And lo and behold, it was kind of nice little difference where you have the black guy who is not just the comic relief and he's not just the first to die. He's actually kind of the hero of the film because he saves Fountain Johnson and later on he saves Allie Larder he's a capable guy he's not there just to make jokes he's not there just to talk gangsta like some movies force into that no Tay Diggs was just a normal guy so I liked that Allie Larder I liked her in the Final Destination films I thought she did fine in this I think after this she would do Final Destination because I think the first one came out in 2000. Could be wrong on that, but for some reason I keep thinking it's 2000. <clears throat> I like Allie Larder. She would also be in James Bob Bob Strike Back, among other films. Bridget Wilson, she's not in the film too long, but she does okay. I, I, I always remember her from Mortal Kombat in 1995. Fauta Jansen and Jeffrey Rush, like I said, they have some fun dialogue where she knows if you love me, you find a way to drop dead in five seconds. And then he's describing all the ways she tried to kill him. Oh yeah, like the Jim Jones Kool-Aid, which is exactly that. Like they play off of each other very well. And like the setup is, hey, you stay the night. If you do, if you survive, you get a million dollars. And Chris Dutton's like, fuck you, hey, I'm ready. I'll walk. Now, I don't care. <laughs> and then the whole place just shut up. And they can't leave. And I like some of the ideas. Like, they open up this coffin, and then there's a bunch of mini coffins. And then in each mini coffin, there's a gun. I like the look of that. I like that idea. 
when they go down, they see these skeletons, including a skeleton guy on a skeleton horse. Which sounds silly, but I think it looks better than it sounds. And pretty much just them going through the house, trying to survive. Ghosts playing tricks on them. One instance, Allie Lara thinks she sees Tate Diggs. But then she's getting pulled into this pool of blood and Tate Diggs help her out. Because it wasn't really him, it was something else. The thing with Bridget Wilson, there's nothing there. But then there's something on the video and she gets attacked. Jeffrey Rush, like I said, going to a guy, finding a guy with no face. Great gory of aftermath effect. Again, like I said, you find some stuff going on with Peter Gallagher's character and connection with Fountain Jansen's character. I guess the first time you're watching this, maybe you're supposed to think, is it people? Because I barely remember the original House in Haunted Hill. I saw it one time, but I do remember the fact that, well, you know what? I'm not 100% certain now. I could be wrong, but I think in the original, you found out there was no ghosts. That was all this big ploy by the wife trying to kill Vincent Price or something. I, I could be wrong on that. And maybe the film's trying to make you believe that, but then the third act, it is ghosts. There are there. But you have a great scene where Jeffrey Rush is put into this chamber. I forget what it's called. It's like a saturation chamber or something about, oh, this old, they thought maybe if you steer them back to normal, what makes a crazy person can maybe make them uncrazy, like steer them, I guess, what, steer them to normal? And Jeffrey Rush is put into this. And just all the crazy images, like Jeffrey Combs bouncing this ball, when he's in the water, you have this cool effect. I wish it was there a little bit longer, but like a, a woman with no eyes and a mouth. It seems like something that was cut from Ghost Story. I, I thought there was a there was a shot of that that was going to be in that movie Ghost Story, but it was cut out. Or was that another effect? Like someone with no eyes, but then a mouth. That could have been another thing I'm thinking of. But you see it briefly in that scene. I liked that. It's just all the crazy stuff that happens in there. And I like the cast. Chris Gattans actually surprised me. He wasn't annoying, especially the scene when he's telling them, you don't get it. This house is pissed. It has no morals. Because it's a fucking house! No, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> But long story short, you get to the finale. Now, my one problem with the film, for me, and maybe a lot of people felt this way too, is when the physical manifestation of the ghosts arrive, it's not that impressive. It wasn't that impressive in 1999. It wasn't that impressive watching it today. It's this ink blot shit. Maybe it's Trying to be like the Warshack, Warshack test. Can't even say the fucking name right. Just combined it right by the images I saw. Really piss poor. If it was a CGI, it looks like shitty CGI. You know that test that you look at an ink blot and you're supposed to, hey, think what you want. It could be a bird or it could be a bat or it could be fucking whatever's in your head. It's trying to be that. It's just like shitty ink blot from hell. Which I guess is supposed to be. I just, I don't want to watch ink oozing out and shitty. If it's not CG, forgive me, but I'll just say CG for the sake of argument because I don't know what other effect it was. It just looked like shitty CG. It looked awful. It looked cheap. It looked cheap back in the day. I wish either they just were more subtle and just had something, or hell, it could have been just fucking Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs, and then you turn around, he's there. You turn around, then he's over here. And, or, it, I mean, Jeffrey Combs as a psycho doctor is more scarier than a fucking ink blot. Or, hell, make up a creature like in Poltergeist. Poltergeist, maybe I have that in the head because Toby Hooper passed away. Whoever the fuck directed it, still, 
there are creatures like the one in the doorway and Joe Beth Williams screams and that looked better. And that was 1982 than what I saw in this film, which is 1999. Why well, have it just be a physical manifestation of a creature? Any creature. How steal it? Steal the, the fucking cool bat from Stephen King's graveyard shift or the, the fucking creature in Hellraiser that's in the hallway. Steal that and make some... Hell, you got TMB. Have them make up a practical creature. That would be better than this fucking ink blot shit. Just, you could tell it's like, oh no, don't do that. Oh, come on. Really? I'm glad that there's real ghosts in the story. Although I'm sure the movie still could have worked if you just made it a fake a la... Well, shit, if I name a movie, people would be pissed that I spoiled that movie. But there are other movies that have done that. But th this effect doesn't work. And granted, at least there's some nice physical stuff when Tate Diggs and Allie Lara running and the, the floor is blowing up in real time. They cut the scene out that they should not have cut out, where Allie Lauder falls and there's all these zombies coming out of the woodwork and grab her. Why wasn't it just that? I mean, Founder Johnson goes through a wall. Why couldn't it be just zombies grabbing her, pulling her down, and now they're walking towards them and baning down and take notes from Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight or all these other things where these practical creatures or zombies. Zombies would have been better than this ink blot. I'm just saying almost anything would be better than what the fuck they had. The only things that would be worse is maybe some fat cherubs. The little, the, 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 the Campbell Soup Kid. If it was a bunch of ghosts, cherubs, the little the Campbell Soup Kid chasing them, that maybe would be worse. Maybe some people would be better to laugh at, but... Because there's some stuff... I, one thing I didn't notice until I saw the Blu-ray is there's this one shot where Allie Lauder and Tay Diggs look down the hallway, and down the hallway, like, there's a door, and it looks like teeth. Almost like it's a big mouth. And I didn't notice that. It looked like a practical effect. Like, I didn't notice that before. It should have been... They should not have cut the scene where the zombies attack her and Tate Diggs pulls her out. They should not have cut that scene. In fact, it should have just been zombies or creatures or just have one practical creature that's the culmination of all these things combined. Not, not this thing. And th this darkness. Darkness Falls had a better fucking shit than this movie. And I like Darkness Falls. That creature looked better than this. The fucking Tooth Fairy thing. I actually want to watch Darkness Fall sometime. I actually like that movie. I saw that in the theater back in the day. But then things happen, and at the end, it's just T. Diggs and Allie Lauder who survive. They get the money, they get out of there. So, other than that, and there was a sequel. I actually forgot I reviewed the sequel. So I'm going to put in the link down below my review to the sequel to this called Return to House on Haunted Hill. People are like, why are you watching it again? Because I don't want to. I reviewed it once before and hell, maybe it did kick out people because it's a very old webcam I used. Like very old video from almost seven years ago <laughs> so uh, it'd be fun for people to watch if you want to my th it's like that's when you only had 15 minutes or 10 minutes so it's in two parts or maybe three but look down below and it'll be in the info box my thoughts on the sequel which I, I thought was a piece of shit that's one that I remember there was a that blu-ray that has a blu-ray the sequel has a blu-ray because I remember I, didn't, I only saw it on DVD, but the Blu-ray was, oh, you could pick all this out and change people's fates. So you could have multiple versions of the movie at your fingertips. So make the decisions, pick your own adventure horror movie. <clears throat> Which seemed like a cool idea. 
to watch a movie and pitch who lives and who dies and that's supposed to change the movie then you read up and it's like well it didn't really do that much I think they tried to do that one of the Final Destination like three or something it just it wasn't really that different I thought they did maybe not but someone should actually do that that would actually be a very interesting idea for a home video choose who lives who dies and then your choices to make a completely different movie <clears throat> it's like three or four movies in one or multiple movies in one but that would take a lot of a lot of effort into something that might not pan out if only five people saw it but anyway the, the sequel sucked. It was a sequel that wasn't needed. And yeah, that has a Blu-ray in the U.S., but this doesn't. I don't understand it. <clears throat> but overall, I do enjoy this film a lot. I enjoyed the cast. I thought it was a... Moved at a good pace, 90-some minutes long. I like the location, the setting. Thought the production design did a great job on the look of the house, brought some nice atmosphere. You some get some nice gory bits. Um, well, hell, you see one right here. You can't see it too clearly, but one person's head that is found. Once again, great effects by TMB. Jeffrey Rush, Fountain Jansen, Tay Diggs, Ali Larder. I thought they all did fine. Chris Gatan. Sweet Dreams by Marilyn Manson. I like that rendition of that song. Very fast paced. Simple setup. To the point. Has a good sense of humor at times. Nice to see Jeffrey Combs in there for a little bit. A really enjoyable horror film. Again, my only problem is that darkness ink blot bullshit for the third act. I think it should have just been if you don't have something, just have a practical creature. Or how fucking idea yeah, Jeffrey Combs would have been scarier than this fucking thing. Or just the zombies or whatever would have been better than the what they have. So that's my only gripe with it. By the way Thanks for watching my thoughts on House on Haunted Hill from 1999. I think it's a good remake. And it, this deserves a Blu-ray in the U.S. I don't understand why Warner Brothers are lazy assholes. The fucking sequel's on Blu-ray, but not the first one. That makes a lot of fucking sense. So, yeah. Thanks to Till for sending me the Blu-ray of this. Nice to see in HD. Thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.